all of the structures that we use to run the world today, our civics, our politics, our legal systems, health care, education, are all structured for a world 100 or 200 years ago, not for the world of today. So we think we're in for a lot of disruption. Hi, I'm Tracy Offenheimer for Reason TV, and today I'm talking with Salim Ismail at the 2013 Global Conference in Beverly Hills. Salim is the founding director of Singularity University. Salim, thanks for talking to us. Thanks for having me. So, uh, what's new with Singularity? Um, well, we're continuing with our programs. We have 80 students coming from, I think, 40 different countries this year. This one kid out of Argentina has gone and created nanosatellites that if you create a mesh system, he wants to launch about 100 or 150 of these, and he will be able to provide real-time video anywhere on the planet. Um, and his first satellite launched like three days ago. And so uh, we're seeing some of these projects now become very real off the drawing board and into reality. So it's very exciting. Talk about how technology is improving on an exponential level now. You're witnessing it firsthand. Yeah, we, we've been seeing the exponential growth in computing for now 50, 60 years, Moore's Law. Uh, we're now seeing that same paradigm happen in a whole series of other technologies, AI, robotics, nanotech, 3D printing. We've seen 40% growth in personal computers year on year for 40 years. If you had that same growth in, say, the top speed of a car, Today, a car would go 500 light years in speed. And so that computational capability is now leaching into your smartphones, into our bodies, into everything that we do. Our memories are not in our heads anymore, right? They're in our smartphones. So how do we think about the world as we turn it into information? And when you have an information-based environment, we recognize that it goes into this exponential growth pattern. And the barrier to entry seems to be a lot lower these days. You're a big fan of uh, crowdfunding. So talk right. about what this is and why you're optimistic about it. Yeah, you know, it used to take um, uh, kind of $20 million to create a company uh, with all of the computers and servers and team, etc. Then about, about up to about 10 years ago, it cost about $10 million. Today, it's like $100,000. That means that that many more people can have access to it. And as we get to crowdfunding, which means that anybody with a great idea can be funded for that idea, no matter where they are in the world, it democratizes the environment and we create a pure meritocracy. And so one of the biggest issues that VCs or investors have with companies is market risk. We don't know whether a particular product is going to make it in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And with crowdfunding, you have market validation. And we've just never had that before. And so there will be some kinks as we work out the mechanics of it. But this looks like the most exciting development in, in financing and funding in 50 years. In layman's terms, you're basically saying that because the risk is so much more spread out, it, it makes it a lot more of these projects just doable to try. Exactly. And we've seen from history that it success comes from not the quality of a project, but how many projects there are. If you have a hundred um, uh, companies, one of them will succeed. And so if we have more companies out there, we'll get that many more home runs. And we think this will be a major driver of the economy in the next couple of decades. This seems to be a trend not just with technology. If you look at journalism with bloggers, there's no editor now. If, if you have good content, you're right. going to get your can get an audience and that's really all it takes now. So do you say this isn't limited just to uh, technology that you can see this elsewhere? Oh, it's happening across industries. You know, the first few were newspapers and um, music and uh, electronic publishing. Those are the first three domains fully information enabled. Now we're moving to cars being information enabled. The new Tesla is essentially an app. You download an update every week. So we're moving into that world. When we start seeing that, you know that something funky is happening. And we're turning pretty much everything into a computational basis. But at the same time, there's a lot more government barriers and regulations. So what have your experiences been with this, especially well, on an international scale? Oh, this is probably the biggest structural issue that we have in the world today. Um, and, and not to rail on government, but fundamentally the, the obligation to, to provide public safety is important. And we don't know what the implications are of, say, genetically modified foods or new types of treatments. And it takes time to figure out the clinical trials mm -hmm. and yet the world is moving very very fast one of the big questions that we're asking right now is how does any regulatory framework keep pace with technology as it's accelerating away from us right we've lost the whole music digital music thing the patent system is fundamentally broken privacy is washing away in front of our eyes by the time the fda regulates a drug today the drug is out of date if you're studying a master's degree in one of the areas that we teach, um, advanced robotics or biotech or neuroscience, by the time you finish your degree, you're out of date. Right. And we've never seen that in the world before, that our ability to teach a subject can't keep pace with the m amount of changes in that subject area. So we have to evolve entirely new mechanisms to keep pace with this new world. All of the structures that we use to run the world today, our civics, our politics, our legal systems, health care, education, are all structured for a world 100 or 200 years ago 
not for the world of today. So we think we're in for a lot of disruption. And our kind of reason for existence is to train a new generation of leaders to how to navigate that. Great. Well, thank you again for talking to us, Salim. Thanks for having me. Great to have be here. Uh, for Reason TV, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer.